Hello and welcome to the Giant and Mini Podcast. How are you doing today, Mini? I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself, Giant? Oh, you know, just chilling up here, walking in the clouds. Everything is just wonderful. How is it down there by you, Minnie? Oh, everything is great down here. I see all these small little things. There's snacks all over the place. This is wonderful. Are we done? Or Who, Who's that? I don't know. I'm going to leave. Why are you? What? Who? Who's okay. that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Not> don't leave. <laughs> I think I had the worst, like the most forced smile on my face right now. <laughs> it's just a blaster there. I probably look a little crazy at this point. You didn't find that as amusing as I did? Not even close. Why not? That was hilarious right there. Come on, that was great. It was all right. right? It was all right. Sorry, she interrupted that podcast. I thought that was going really well. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, guys. This is Nadir. <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Blind. And uh, this is Nadir. This is Yadira. That's Angry Pants Yadira over there. <laughs> I'm fine. Angry Pants. I'm fine. Look at that force smile. <laughs> it's just been there. <laughs> I don't know how to remove it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Understand, guys. I don't tell her what I'm about to do whenever I start right. everything. And so I just go. It, and it throws me off. And so that's... <laughs> That's why it irritates me more than like usually. That's what's. That's the whole point. That <laughs> that is literally the whole point. Cause it's what? Because I'm expecting something, and he literally told me what we were going to do, <laughs> and then he did something different, <laughs> and I'm just like, yes, you know. And I'm not like I I don't, I don't do like improv or acting or none of that. That's Leave me a I comment am. if you want a giant and mini podcast. I it's, am uh, not. It's giant Jeffrey and Mini McGillicuddy. So I uh. It throws Let me, me know. off. Anyway. <laughs> oh, man. What's up, wife? How you doing? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> oh, that was great. God. Oh, man, I'm priceless, aren't I? Yep. Yep. There you go. The wife gave the cosign. She said I'm priceless. So You are. No one can deny no one's that. Doubted, no one's doubting that. All right. So, uh, wife, let's uh, recap the week. Uh, we need theme music for the recap nope. of the week. No, we don't. Bam, bam, bam. Way. Recap of the week. Okay, I get it. Way, way more energy than I can... Oh, this is just fake energy right here. Than I can deal with right now. So let's recap the week, wife. Uh, we talked about... We said we were going to talk about the Renaissance Fair because we did it the day this went live last oh, week. Oh, it was really fun. We're going again. Yes, we're going again <laughs> tomorrow. That's how fun. That's how much fun it was. Yeah, but we're going out with our friends this time. A yes. bunch of homeschool uh, We're going with the and, homeschool homies. Yeah, it's going to be awesome, inshallah. That, oh, we should have a podcast named that. What do you think? What? The homeschool homies. Sure, why not? Anyway. There you go. So, <clears throat> it was really fun. There were lots of animals to feed, and the girls and I got henna. But there's got already, there's already faded. Um, Can you stop saying it like your name is Barbara? Okay. What did you get? Henna. Henna. Thank you. <laughs> Holy crap. Me and the girls got henna. Okay. It's so, don't look at it. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I'm not an Arab either. Okay, but you could say it right. <laughs> Okay. Man, you know what I love? I love arroz con gondules. First of all, even when you try to say it in Spanish, you arroz. still mess it up. Arroz because con it's not gondules. gondules. You gondules. It, you're saying it wrong. It, I know it's a con gondules. Gondules. I just said gond. But even, I said gondules. Even when you're not I paying attention gondules. and you'll ask me, are you making arroz con gondules? And I'm like, it's gondules. Hey, listen, I try my best, <laughs> okay? I'm, I try my hardest and my best so, to be on point. So leave me alone, woman. Yeah, so... All right? Leave me alone with the henna thing. You, you just right. said it right. Just say it right. I purposely right? did because you made me self-conscious. So good job. Thank you. <laughs> good job. Oh, you don't have to be self-conscious. So you got your henna. Yeah, I got the henna done. Mine is still going really strong. You had a stir fry. No, you didn't. You had a wonton bowl. Yeah, it or was something. like a stir fry-ish thing anyway. How was it? Was it? Pretty, it was pretty from the From the Renaissance Fair. You'd expect it to be pretty good, but... I mean, you expect it to be terrible, as a matter of fact, from the Renaissance. But it was fair. all right. It wasn't great, but it was. It was like, oh, that's edible. Mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. And so, uh, what else? What else? Oh, we were, the kids. We were talking to the guy on stilts. That was I bought, pretty cool. I bought a sword. You bought a sword. Hold on, I got to get a wider view here of me. Let's do a wide view. I don't know if y'all could see. Where was it? Over there so. in the corner. Back there in the corner. 
I don't know if you could see it or not, but there's a whole new display of swords there. So I'm gonna put it back on the both of us. Yeah, that's that's the that's the sword display. The boys did archery. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, it was a fun time. It was great. Alhamdulillah, we love the place. It was, it was all muddy, so it, it really <laughs> felt like we were in the mid medieval times. It really was. And oh, someone's calling the wife. Call. That's that's not me. That ain't me. Oh yeah. yeah, that's you. No, it's not. That's one of the iPads. That's not mine. Just, that's either you or one of the kids. Just yeah, just turn off the iPad. I don't have it with me. They're right next to you, woman. No. Holy crap. Okay, reach <laughs> over and feel for them, because they're not. Unless it's Suhela's, it is. Yeah, well, I told you. And to my both of I'm sorry. I can't reach him properly. Unbelievable. Hold on. You keep talking. Oh, they, they hung up. Okay, they hung up. Let's One see of how. The girl's friends calling. Let's see how many times they call back during the podcast. Right. We're not going to edit this out. We're going to keep all have, the phone calls. My kids have a social life, and so. People, one of their uh, friends calling. People want to iMessage, not iMessage. FaceTime. People want to FaceTime them. So, yeah, that's what happened. So, we had a great time at the Renaissance so Fair. That was the Renaissance Fair. That was really fun. What else and did then, we do this week? It was the last day of co op. It was the last day of co op, and the girls had their ballet recital. Mm hmm. So, that was really fun. That was their first recital ever. So, they were super cute. Mm hmm. They were wearing uh, leotards and stuff. Yeah, the, and they looked really cute. And they were, mm -hmm. they were so serious about it, like, especially Samaya. Like, she was, <laughs> they looked really cute. See, uh, uh, I got a harassing phone calls. Oh, yeah. That happened this week. You Lots know? of harassment. We, uh, you but know. But that's more on a serious note. Like yeah. that, that's harassed and people calling. You know, we. Insult we insult um, your children and your wife. You know, we found a cancer. We eliminated that cancer. Cancer got mad. Perate, hold on. Somebody's calling me. So, oh, perate. Perate un momento. Oh, I think it's my mom. Un minuto. I'll just text her. Un I'm minuto. Is that right? Yeah, un minuto. Mo wait, minuto? Yeah. All right, yeah. You yep. guys and your vowel sounds. That's what I get caught up with, right? What? I get caught up with the vowel sounds. Always. I don't, it's, it's sason, not yes. sason. Or, or some weird way that you say, yeah. I say sason. It's or, because I'm Or an you Arab say sason. That's how you say Sason? Yeah, sason. Sason? It's, a, it's an ah. Uh. Sason. Sason. Uh -huh. See, yeah, see, these are the things that I have issues with. Because in Arab, in Ar as Arabs, we have the ah. Uh, yeah, that ah. Uh. Like my name. Yeah. Is Nadir. In see? Spanish, there's no eh. Like eh is it's ah. It's ah. That's why her grandmother would be like, I know that. <laughs> I know that. I know that. Thank you. I know that. Thank you. Thank you. La donita. Like the little donuts. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, uh, so we got rid of a cancer. Hold on. We talked about that already. Oh, yeah. We got rid of the cancer. And then the cancer decided to call me up with a caller ID blocked. And, um, and I didn't answer because I'm like, well, I'm going to answer nobody's caller ID, block caller ID. And he calls me back and I'm like, maybe there's one of my boys or somebody messing with me. And uh, this guy, this cancer claims to be a sheikh. Okay. He, he he only calls himself a sheikh, him and everyone who he has. Uh, Affiliation with. I no, guess, no, or not affiliate. With, who, ha who he has conned, yeah. who he has bamboozled, who he has tricked. Right. With his. Uh, with his ways. With his uh, with his ways. Uh, so this cancer, see, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll discuss it just a bit. But it's cool. I'm talking about, I'm not saying any names, but I'm just calling I'm, cancer, what, cancer. What I'm saying Take is, that cancer. <laughs> I wish I could have, oh, I wish I could have Russell so, Crowe. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, um, <laughs> it is pretty serious and I don't know where, inshallah. Oh, we're handling it legally. Right, legally. Like we're, we're that, handling, but this uh, is what I mean by legally. I don't know where that's the cancer's I, I legally, but we're not talking about, we're not saying any names. So anyway, you understand? I understand. But I'm, All right. So, until everything so cancer is, called me back thinking I was one of my boys. I answered it. And, uh, you know, the, you know, for someone himself, who sell, calls himself a sheikh, he sure had some really nasty things to say. Yep. He was cussing up a storm. He was cursing a lot. He said horrible things about my children, right? Which I will hold against him until the day of judgment. Better and he believe said horrible things I will. about me. He said terrible things about my wife, which I will and he will and she will hold against him on the day of judgment well, with the children comments as well. Right. And uh, I was I didn't I didn't fall for the bait because I know the bait was for me to get angry and for me to start, you know, getting at him pretty much. Yeah, but there's no point in any of that. You know, we handle things professionally. So we handle I very, things with Islamic character, inshallah. I was and silent we keep, the whole time. our intentions pure and our intentions correct, inshallah. And then, you know, you proceed with that. Mm -hmm. I was silent the whole time mm -hmm. trying to get my other phone lined up to record the phone call, but it just wasn't working. So he hung up. And now I have a, you know, I have now, means well, now, of now, now we're just going to move forward and see, inshallah, what happens. And, yeah. You know. May yep. Allah keep her, keep us in your du'a, and you know it's always it's always something when you're in in these 
kind of nonprofit, and especially when you're in advocacy type fields, somebody always has something to say. Somebody you know who who makes money uh, perpetuating the stereotype that you actively fight against. Right, they're always gonna have something to say. You know, but with that being said, we can move on from that. All right, what else happened this week? Um, I had a baked potato today. For you the did. first time ever. Because you don't like them. I hate baked potatoes. But did you like this one? This one's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> we had brisket on it. Yep. We had some brisket with some barbecue sauce. It was It was like a brisket loaded. It was pretty rocking potato. right there. I liked it. It was very good. Alhamdulillah. Anything this else? Because I heavily seasoned it. Let's see. Like... I had a last minute chutzpah on Friday, which no. I will be posting. Yep. Look out for that on Friday, inshallah. Um, and I may be. And that's our recap, I think. And I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. That was the week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. That was the recap of the week. So, what are we talking about today <laughs> uh, besides our recap? All right. So, we're talking about inspiration porn. Yeah. Right? Let's just call it what it is, guys. I know people, people like, get so people weirded get a little out. weirded out, especially like, whenever they hear the word porn. Right. But let's be real here, guys. That's what this is. Yeah. It's inspiration so porn. So, tell people what that is. So first, for those who don't know. So look, as as disabled people, we we tend to be looked at by society in two different ways. Either a we are the inspirational thing that you know that that keeps people moving in life. Like oh my god, he's doing his laundry. It's amazing. Oh my god, he went. He picked up that piece of bread by himself. Oh he made god. himself a sandwich. It's amazing. Oh my god. You know, like that. Or the opposite side of the spectrum. Uh, cancer knows a lot about this. Um, it's the, it's the, oh God, I'm so helpless. Oh my God, my mom is calling her again. Is that your mom calling them? Yes. Can you answer it? Just answer it. Hold on, I'm going to answer this. You keep oh. talking. Oh, that's the wrong one. you talking? I'm not okay, I got it. You it? I, no, I already took care of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll text her. Um, keep talking while I text. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta put my headphones back in. We're professional. The most professional. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, so the other one is the other side of the spectrum. You got the one like you had, you know, you're super mega inspirational. Everything you do is inspirational and all that. And then the other side of that is, you know, I can't do anything on my own. I need you to survive. Able-bodied, sighted person. I need you. Without you, I am absolutely worthless and can't do anything. I am the uh, absolute opposite of independence. Right. I am 100 percent helpless. I am weak. I am a nobody without the aid of 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 you, you know, of, of sighted, able bodied people. That's the opposite extreme. OK, um, so today we're going to talk about the the first side of it. Right. I think we talked a lot about the the weak, you know, the, the weak aspect of it, that if you're not weak and that makes people very uncomfortable right. whenever you're independent, whenever you try to do things on your own. Whenever uh, you're like, no, no, I got it. It's all good. And they either take offense, which is right. weird. They take offense to it. Or they're just like, oh, okay, okay. Um, I don't know what to do right now. What, right. what do you mean? Just let me do whatever the hell I got to do, bro. Like, there's, there's no reason to be all weirded out or confused or anything like that. Go ahead, wife. Let's talk about this. About that side? Uh, we're, talking the, about, uh, we're talking about the, uh, what's called? We're talking about inspiration porn. That's okay, what so we're the focusing other, on the because other side of the coin, We're talking basically. about the inspiration porn. Yeah, we could talk about weakness. I believe we talked about that already. I think, I think we did. But uh, uh, whatever. Whether that's we did a lot or of what we we'll fight about it again. About, that's a lot of what we fight. Anyway. Both sides we fight this yeah. stupid But I think we've, idea. we've kind of addressed this. The other side is one that people don't really normally talk about. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of disabled, those of us who are disabled, we do talk about it a lot because it's infuriating. And that is the sign where we are put on these unrealistic pedestals. And really quick, this actually came up uh, in discussion in the NFB Muslims group as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so the NFB Muslims group is a group of blind people from uh, generally a lot, a lot of them are in the United States, but uh, there's blind Muslims from all over the world, right? Africa. I think there's a couple in Turkey. Okay. Um, and all They're these, all over the world. But all you, over the world. What are you getting at? God damn it. <laughs> what the hell? You want to rush through this podcast? All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one. No, but uh, what are you getting at? Because uh, here, you go from yeah, in guys. the NFP group, and they're all la, over da, the da, 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 da. <laughs> I can't even smile. Like, I, I couldn't even muster up the plaster. Come on. You love it. Okay. Uh, anyway, so this came up because somebody sh shared a video of, and this video was also something we, we should talk about. Yeah. <laughs> This was not even, we even talk about this. Somebody shared a video of this masjid, this guy in Australia. Australia. And he's like, we had one of our neighbors come over and complaining about the noise. They were angry. They were angry about they were the noise. They were angry and they were complaining. Wife, you're a little short in the video. I got to shorten myself so I can be even with you. I am short. In and 
you know, no, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> yani, you're like, you're like super low for some Was reason. Noah, because I think Noah was sitting here with his classes and I think he lowered the chair. Hire your chair a bit. Where the heck is the thing? Oh, it, there I got you it. Go. Oh, I got lower. <laughs> no. <laughs> Get a little taller. There you go. Can your feet reach the floor? Yeah. Okay. Kind of. Whoa. What okay. happened? I slipped. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> yeah, that's better. Let me let me get a little higher here. Okay, there we go. Um, so uh, so he shared this video. Uh, one of the brothers from Africa shared the video, and he, it was it was of somebody saying, "Oh, look, some some neighbor came and complained uh, about the noise from our Eid party, and I talked to him for ten minutes, and now he wants to be a Muslim." It was like 10, 15 minutes, and I'm like, "So that's a whole different topic." But <sighs> anyway, so this this whole thing came up because people were saying that, "Oh, um, you know, is this?" I mean, you fix the camera on you a bit. You're like not centered. You're like it's like kind of cutting your face. The other way. Okay. There you go. There's my there's my beautiful wife. Okay, but like I think you're veering off the topic. Yo, woman, I'm trying to fix you up, man. All no, right? no, no. I mean with this whole this, oh, this anyway. video. So is not... I know I'm talking about it. So we had the discussion. We had the discussion about like inspiration through these videos, these Dawa videos, right? Uh, you know, like this will inspire people to get on their dean and all this stuff, and then that kind of led to the inspiration porn for blind people. Now, remember, this is a majority blind group. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because almost everyone universally agrees that inspiration porn is bad. Right. But when it comes to this video, people had different opinions. It's like, it's the same thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's pretty much the same thing. So let's, let's, let's discuss. Um, but let's, so, so just, just to kind of give you a bit of a caveat on how this came up. So, wife, you found a very interesting article. Let's talk about that. So there was an article... I don't know how old the article is. I just know that somebody shared it. And Someone so, you went to high school with, yeah, right? Yeah, recently. Mm -hmm. And so um, the issue with the article was, I, and I've heard of this young woman before. She graduated from Harvard, um, I don't know, I think in 2013 or something like that. That's what the article said. And she's deaf and blind. Graduating from Harvard is an accomplishment in itself. You know what I mean? So somebody graduates from there, congratulations. It's a, it's, you worked hard. I get it. The captions on these shared posts are always the same. And mm -hmm. you can always expect it. Amazing, outstanding, wonderful, um, incredible. Like always. But it's not because this woman worked hard at Harvard and then graduated like other students. Mm -hmm. It's based on the fact that she's disabled. She's disabled and she went to Harvard. Well, here's the thing about that. Her disability is not affecting her uh, cognitively and intellectually. It's not. Like, you know what I mean? She doesn't yeah. struggle. With, she doesn't have a learning disability or anything like that. She has a, a physical disability. She has a print disability. It's, it's not going to affect what, you know what I mean, her ability to learn. It's going to affect how she's learning it because she needs adaptations and she'll need, you know, the extra time on tests and things like that. But again, those are more accommodations and adaptations. But the thing is, she's blind and wow. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She's blind and deaf. I'm sorry. And wow, she did it. And, and, and it's like you're, you're, you're praising me. It's like you, you built a ton of walls, the society mm -hmm. and barriers. And, and they have all kinds of obstacles and things that I have to traverse. And then I have to, you know, actively not making things accessible. Right. Um, you know, not not give, not putting things in place that uh, that should be there to make her job easier as a student. Right. You know, giving her the pro so appropriate here's technology the thing. on top or, of all you know, of her schoolwork or whatever. I guarantee you this because when I was in college, it was the same thing. Because we've been through it. Right. <laughs> That's why. On top of her of her normal schoolwork load, mm -hmm. okay, she was also being her own advocate. She was also being her own fighter. She was literally she was taking care of her needs because and fighting for them because who else was going to? You know, I I promise you that woman worked ten times harder than any other than anyone who's able bodied. Anybody who's disabled and who has done these things has worked ten times harder than anybody who's able bodied. And that might upset some people, but that's that's the truth, like it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, you can't be like, wow, you climbed that wall when you built the wall. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You yeah. built that wall. You knew exactly the struggles I was the struggles I was going to face, and you put it there expecting me not to be able to do it. Yep. And then when I did it, it's like, wow. You're amazing. No, what I have to say to you is a few choice words that are not appropriate because you built the wall. And yes, I got over it, but I had to work 10 times harder to climb the stupid wall that you knew all along where the steps were to climb up into them. And you climbed those steps like it was nothing. And you didn't give me that information. And I was stuck here climbing and clawing until I got to the top. So I don't want your praise. I worked because I had no other choice. You can't sit here and treat it like it's this... Incredible thing. Well, you're disabled, and if you're disabled, and they're disabled, and they're doing it, and 
there's no excuse for those of us who have no disability or who are able-bodied. Or if they can do it, we can do it too. We're not here for your comparison. We're not here to make you feel better about what your abilities are or, or aren't. We're not here for that. We want to live our lives just like everyone else. So we don't, we're not here to serve as your inspiration or your pity or any of that stuff. Equity is just something that has eluded the disabled community and still eludes us. As much as society wants to think that they've moved so far up ahead in things, they haven't. We are nowhere near where we should be as a society when it comes to equity for disability, and we are nowhere near where we think we are when it comes to equity for disability. And when you read articles like that and all the comments are amazing, red, you know, a little red heart emojis and wow and all that stuff, mm -hmm. it's patronizing and it's trivializing all the work that that young woman did. And somewhere in the articles, it said something about she had to, she works with an interpreter who... Um, Signs in her hand, right? Yeah. And then, you know, and then she reads Braille mm -hmm. and then she types things out and then or she'll sign or whatever it is. And she has her methods and none of that. That's just adaptations and skills that she has learned in order to be able to survive and function in this world. That's not built for those of us who are disabled and particularly in her situation where she's multi disabled. When 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 you trivialize it to the point of and I'm here's the thing. I don't want people to think like, well, you're just not giving her credit. Yeah, I absolutely am. She worked hard and congratulations to her. And I think she's an advocate disability um, lawyer or something like that. Like she, she works in the field of disability and she's opening doors for anybody who is disabled. And she, you know what I mean? Like the rest of us who are in this field are trying to do. It's hard work. It's really hard. Those of us who are disabled, I don't think anybody really talks enough about the fatigue that we all experience. That, at least that I experience, but I, I have talked to others and we live it. You I wake, mean, you said it. He's like, um, it's like you wake up tired. You wake up <laughs> tired. Because every day. You wake up tired. Every and day. And I, and I, I totally relate to that. Yeah, you wake I up am, tired because... From the moment you're up, you're having to prove that your existence is worthy of and, anything. And God forbid, whenever you're about to do something where you have to deal with a lot of new people. Oh, yeah. Go to the airport, um, you know, going into a building for a meeting, whatever, Doctor's whatever it may be. Going to a new Mejjed, new community I've never been to. Right. It's even, like you have to get your mind right. Even something as simple as a doctor's appointment because yep. they're they're very quick to try. And not even just for the kids, but even for yourself. They're, try, mm -hmm. they're very quick to try to make decisions for you and, and not treat you with the same respect that they would treat somebody who's able-bodied. You literally are fighting every day just to exist. And society wants to pat themselves on the back like, wow, they did. Look at that. That's amazing. And if they can do it, we can do it too. Why aren't you then? Then why are you talking and not removing the barriers that you have set in place? Because instead you're fighting to keep them in place. Um, so many businesses for a while, this I think was last year or something, or very recently, and I guess it's still kind of ongoing. Like they want to remove, they're, they're like against the ADA because it's like, oh, too many people, they... You know, um, there's so many lawsuits and they're just pretending to be blind or disabled in general or they are they just want it to make money off of us or whatever, like they're fraudulent uh, mm -hmm. claims and stuff. Um, when when things like that are still happening. Yeah, we're, we're nowhere near where we should be. And I get really passionate about that subject. And, and we're not your inspiration and we're not here to be pitied and we're not here to be told that we can't do things. If, if our lives are a lot more difficult because of all the barriers that the able-bodied society has put into place and the world is not built for us. So then if it's not, then let us help you to make it a little easier for us to live in it. So when we tell you what our needs are, we tell you what our adaptations need to be and our accommodations need to be, don't dismiss it and decide that, you know, you know better um, going back to that point. Or if you see me out with my kids or you see someone who's blind, crossing a street or going to get coffee or catching a train or any of the mundane things mm -hmm. or yes even something as an accomplishment of as graduating from harvard do not reduce it to wow you're disabled and you're living life and i can't believe you're doing that mm -hmm. you're living your normal you're life. living a, she worked really hard to get into harvard she worked really hard to stay there and she worked hard to graduate. Those are not easy feats, period, disabled or not. But when, when you want to focus it all on the disability, you're, the problem also with that is that you're not, you're not going into depth or even acknowledging the work that she had to do because of her disability. So advocating for her rights, advocating for uh, different testing accommodations, um, extended periods of uh, deadlines and all mm -hmm. the all the things that go with when when you know when you're in school and all the other accommodations that you have to work with and in college it's not like you have like a, like the IEP like you do you know what I mean when you're younger you have to advocate for yourself I had the commission of the blind but the fact is didn't 
They didn't it's, do anything for me. Yeah, I, in, I in literally, college, they, had, uh, they generally have like a disabled... The coordinator, at least. Yeah. And when I was in college... Disability I, coordinator. Yeah, and I worked to get my readers, and I did all of that stuff. The Commission mm-hmm. of the Blind didn't come and advocate or speak for me or anything like that. I had to take care of all that stuff. I remember whenever the lady from Commission of the Blind called me a womanizer. <laughs> yeah, she got in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> she called me a womanizer, wow. bro. I said, what? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I was like, are way, you crazy, Way, woman? way out of line. Way said, out of line. Are you crazy? <laughs> but, what? um... Yeah, so that was that. That was that article, and it, I got kind of fired up about it because because um because I'm uh, I'm likable because I'm not shy. Right. <laughs> Why am I a womanizer? It was way out of line, and you <laughs> you reported it. You did the right thing. I was like, bro, um, I'm a Muslim man. What are you talking about? She apologized, and I think didn't they remove her from your case? Yeah, yeah, they did. But I I wasn't in college much longer after that. You know, because of the debt and all that, that stuff. I, yeah, like, but I was. Phew, that's that what, article. That was, oh my god, that, I can't believe she called me that. That article got me all fired up because it really. To me, it's like you're you're reducing it to if she wasn't disabled, it wouldn't be impressive. And then the thing is, what what did she end up doing as far as work? I, if I'm not mistaken, she ended up she's like a she did Harvard Law, so she's yeah. a disability uh, rights. And and lawyer. this adds and this adds more to what Yadid is saying. Um, it's great that she's working in that field, but the problem is, is even though she has a degree from Harvard Law, still people won't hire her. Right. Still people won't hire and her. And so a lot of us who do end Despite up... Despite she has that qualification, she has everything that everyone else has, if not more, because right. just the determination to get through it all, right. despite all of the BS obstacles in front of her, she still made it, and, and they and still... And she'll still get a harder time to... Yep. You know what I mean? Um, you know how many times... I got to talk about this. You know how many times I went into job interviews and everything was great. Everything was great. I was... Uh, we did phone interviews. Great. All the... Everything was great. Up until the in-person interview. As soon as I walk into that in-person interview and I come in with my cane, it's it. It's done. You're not... It's gone. We're not... You're not what we're looking for. Yep. Or or we, we, we you know, we found someone else to fill the position or the position is no longer available or... Mm-hmm. Some variation of that garbage. And it always happens. And they don't outright say it because legally they can't. Yep. But they always have loopholes to get around it. And, um, you know, I'm not sitting here saying, you know, like pulling out that pity card. Like, oh, my God, blind people or disabled people can't get jobs. This is a reality. Like it or not. I mean, it's not. Like you oh said, my it's God, not about I can't a pity remember, card. I can't, this is real. I can't remember this, the, the, the fact or statistic or whatever. Mm. But legally, disabled people, companies are allowed to pay them way below minimum wage. And I mean way below. Yep. Yep. That's legal still. So people want to fight for like, we need to raise minimum wage. How about there's there's you factories, get, there's factories where there's a bunch of blind and disabled people there making five bucks an hour. Even less. I'm serious. I think it's even less than that. You can get pe- like pennies on a dollar. It's bad. So you're, just you're, because yeah, and their their justification was like, you know, so you could keep your social security. Right. It's like, bro, if you paid me a good wage. Do you know how many people? I wouldn't need my damn social security. How many people who actually have heard from schools who are supposedly, like government run schools who are supposed to be helping with um, training and all the stuff, all the skills for the life skills and things like mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. Well, literally just been told. Um, independent living you're saying? Or? Not just independent living, but just something like uh, like the Joseph Cohen training. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Those, those kind of. Like they to used go to, work there? They or? used to call them rehabilitation centers, but now they're training centers. Mm-hmm. How many times it has happened and I've had heard from other students that their own instructors or their counselors have straight up told them, um, you're not really going to get anywhere. So your best bet's just be on, on, on social security. Wow. Yeah. There was this one years ago. I read it and I wish I could find that article again. And it was about these, um, high school. There was a, uh, I don't know if she herself was blind, the teacher or the, she had a student who was blind and they were, they were high schoolers and she, they were doing like this whole career thing and, Part of it was learning how to dress for success, okay? Mm-hmm. When the teacher or the student, whoever it was that was, had approached and said, I think it was the teacher who had approached them like on the student's behalf. Mm-hmm. Um, and it might have been like one of those blind schools or something like that. Yeah. Like, we need to teach them these skills. This is important. And the response that was given was, well, I mean, they can't really see what they look like anyway, and they're not really going to get jobs anyway. So they're going to be on disability. So what's the point? Mm-hmm. And these are the people that are in charge of trying to better a mm-hmm. blind person's life. And this, this is the problem with having sighted people or somebody, you know, that. And, and, and who doesn't have the empathy and who doesn't have the experience. And this isn't something just only for blind people. Like anybody who's disabled knows discrimination yep. really well. Yep. It's just something you live with. It's and, something you uh, live with. And and there's only a couple routes you go. Either you you fold and you let it happen and you're the poster child for it 
cancer uh, or um or you're broken so much that yeah. you don't have the skills you don't have the self-esteem you don't have the confidence and you're you because you've been made to believe that you can't and so you are much more comfortable with having someone hold your hand the entire way yep or you do what we do and you get really tired really mm-hmm. really exhausted and burned out there's a lot of burnout in this job and you keep going forward because there, there, there's not many other options. You don't really have another option. Not even because it's like, well, you personally don't have another option. It's more like when you look around yourself and you see others struggling with the same things you're dealing with. And what are you supposed to do? Like, you know what I mean? You have, alhamdulillah, if you've been blessed with that ability and that skill and you've been blessed with to be put in that position, you can't just walk away. You can't just be like, well, I'm, I, don't, I don't really care what happens. And it is, it's very exhausting. It's it's so tiring. It's funny because we just had a meeting with our marketing guy and we we're like, you know, it'd be nice if we could kind of get above the poverty level. Right. <laughs> based off, That's the goal. Based off, based off of all the work that we do, you know, it'd be nice if we could And get it's paid funny because the he doesn't level. they don't know what to say to that. They're yeah. like, uh No, like, he was like, You're right. That's <laughs> Yeah, like uh that's, you're right. You know? Because um, what else are you gonna say? And mm-hmm. it's it's just you know, you, you're, it's... And the thing is, is even though we are, you know, alhamdulillah, like we're struggling uh, the way we're struggling, but alhamdulillah, like we know, we know we are in a much, way yeah. better of a position than and alhamdulillah, most and, of and the, thing the is, blind and I don't want people to sit here and be like, oh my God, she's complaining. And I'm not, I'm just sharing struggles that we deal with. And one of the struggles we deal with mm-hmm. is that um, being put on those pedestals and, and that inspiration porn, it's, it's just as detrimental as the other side of the coin. Yeah, it's it just really as is. detrimental. It really is. There's um, it, in either case, it robs you of your humanity. Yep, and it demoralizes you. And and the thing is, is like this is, it's funny because the only time uh, a lot of organizations that claim that they advocate for you and all this stuff is they only bring you out whenever they're ready to fundraise. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and then that's when they, they and that's that's when they pull that inspirational porn out. Right. Heavy. When you when you you know made xyz accomplishments or whatever mm-hmm. and that's just as detrimental and they try to take the credit for it too <laughs> it's, it's it's just very detrimental um because if you would like why is it so hard to just sit on and talk to us on a human level human level mm-hmm. i don't like either you have to want you want to go on either extreme so yeah that was that was what um that was kind of what i ran into today that's what dita ran into today and uh dita we're at about like we're a little under 40 minutes so I think we're good, man. We've, we've, you know, the guys, we oh, have. Oh, wait, been... did you want to? Because I can touch back on that um, video as a convert. Oh, let's talk about it. That's, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, let's do it. This is controversial here. Yeah. Here we go. So, uh, so let's talk about this video. Oh, wait, my chair moved. Check the camera. Are you good? Are you... I don't know. <laughs> uh, move to the right a bit. No, that's my left. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oops. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? I hit the Brill machine, the oh, big my embosser. Oh, God. Okay, you're good. Okay. You look you look you look beautiful. Thank you. You look beautiful in the center there. Um so let's talk about this video. So like I said, it's a video guy from Australia at a masjid or somewhere. Some so Eid gathering. Some Eid gathering, okay? Comes up and it's funny because the video is centered. It's like really perfect mode, though. It's really, ready to really go. perfect. He's mic'd up like his audio is perfect. <laughs> like it's like like it's come, really perfect. Like who are you trying to hustle here? Malaw Adam. I don't know. Maybe it just happened that way. We don't know. We can't judge it. All we can do is comment based off of what we see. Right. Okay. And based off of what we know. So he's like, yeah, uh, neighbor came, complained, and um, I talked to him for 10 or 15 minutes about Islam. And he would just, he wants to take his shahada. And of course, you know, it's the video of him walking him through the shahada and stuff like that. Okay. Two minute video. <sighs> <laughs> Uh, you get to how exasperated Yadita is. So, um, so now I know 100% fact that these, uh, a lot of these videos or some of these videos some. Let's are... Let's go with some. So let's people go some. Don't let's just like, say ah. a lot. I know for a fact that there are a percentage of these videos that is 100% staged. Yeah. Okay? That they are it is, staged. It is meant to look like something real, but and, it is staged. You know, uh, okay? Like, so they hire an spur actor. Spur of the moment. And, and, you know, oh, the guy just came by... On a bike, and you stop, like, hey, let me tell you about Allah and Muhammad. And, you know, two minutes later, and you ready to take your shahada? Yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like, wow. So, um, I'm ready to change my like, whole life. I know for a life. fact that there are staged videos like this. 100%, no doubt about it. It has been shown to me absolutely clear. Okay? Um, and I know that there are moments where this can legitimately happen. It can legitimately happen. 
right? Now, um, now I don't know how it is. The gentleman in the video seems like he's an older gentleman, right? Seems like he, like Allahu Alam, Allah guides who he wills. But seems a little fishy to me that everything was just lined up perfectly, okay. ready to go. But for here's the, the thing. The Let's go beyond that video because this race is a more important topic, I think. Yeah. We're getting a video just... For Let's taking in the content mm -hmm. of, and the subject. I, speaking as a convert, under no circumstances would I have been ready to change my entire life, drop everything, mm -hmm. including relationships, mm -hmm. familial relationships, in 15 minutes of you telling me something after, new. After I came to you mad. Right. Like, Especially let's be after here. I came, like, to, I came you to you angry, upset, telling you to and quiet down. In 15 down. minutes, I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm, a, I'm ready to give up my whole life. And you know, for people who were like, well, no, you know, when you become Muslim, you know, you're for still a fact, you, we're going to get so much crap for of this. Course. We're going to be like, oh, you got to give blah, 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 benefit of all this and Fine. all that. Benefit of the doubt. It's there. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Good. But, and don't tell me that. It's like, the no. behind the blind hot take right here. If you say it and you're, you're like, oh, you're, you know, you're Muslim now and that's all, you know, you're not really, um, you still are who you are, except not. Okay. Yeah. Everything changes. From what you eat to... Especially as a woman, how you dress. How you dress mm -hmm. to the core of your beliefs. Yep. Everything. Everything. And your, it affects your your relationships except, with others. Right. There, it's, it, it's a decadomino effect. Mm -hmm. It affects your relationships. It affects how you view things. Everything changes when, when you decide to take that step. So in 15 minutes after me being angry and you offering me some food, I'm not going to be like, you know what? I'm dropping my whole life and I'm just going to... I'm not saying it doesn't happen. If it happened and it happens and, and that's what, what Allah had put in your heart, alhamdulillah for you, that's beautiful. Que lindo, mashallah. <laughs> Precioso está. <lindo>. Pero <laughs> the thing is that that's not the general rule. That's more the exception. Because yeah. coming to Islam and embracing Islam is a process. It's something you have to learn. It's something that you're asking questions about. It's something that does, can for some people strike you out of nowhere and then you start reading and you some people convert very quickly 15 minutes of and and after you were being angry either this person already was conflicted internally and had never shared that with anyone and was kind of angry because they were kind of fighting against what they were conflicted with mm -hmm. and then after hearing this person speak they said you know what what's the point of fighting it and they came to islam or you know it was staged mm -hmm. and or you know subhanallah there are miracles i guess you know what i mean like, like i said i you know, I could definitely see how how something like that can happen. Allahu alam, Allah guides who He wills. But uh, I like think, I said, I think what I'm just, trying to get at, yeah, is that do not discount the fact that some of these things are staged. Do not discount the fact that some of these things are kind of put together. But then also, uh, and I remember uh, uh, one of the one of the people in the group. Uh, sister, she commented, she was like, I studied Islam for five years <laughs> before I even decided to it make my It was a shahada. year for me. Right? A whole year. Um, so, no, you a little know, more than a year. People have journeys when it comes to this, right? A like, little, it's it was, usually it was not... actually, yes, it was like maybe closer. Like, I'm sure some people are quicker than others. It was like a year and a half to two years. Yeah. Like a year and a half or so for me. Yeah. Before I was ready to do that. And, huh. I'm, and I'm sure, I guarantee you, there are people where it's happened, where it's, you know what, I'm ready for this now. But for the majority, that's that's not the rule. The mm -hmm. rule is usually it's a journey and it's something that you have to weigh heavily. And for some people, even though you know it's right, it's really hard to take that leap because it does mean changing everything. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of us, it also might mean getting kicked out of our homes. It might be my mother doesn't want to speak to me again. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It's not something that it's like, wow. And, you know, everybody's mashallah and happy and and and. Everyone and then and then of course a week later we don't care about that person right. anymore. Yeah, that's, a whole that's the other, other coin. That's, that's the whole... other. That's the other side of the coin right. here, right? Oh, let's watch the let's hear the coming to Islam story and watch the shahada. But then peace out, homie. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about you anymore. Right. And then when you say, well, I don't really want to go to the masjid or be part of the community, it's like, oh, you can't think like that because you, you can't know, be like that. Either like, you either you gotta be know. either you gotta be all Arab and change your name, or you gotta be all Desi and change your name, right? Right. <laughs> Or and whatever I, all this community is, uh, Albanian or Turkish or Bosnian or... Whatever is generally you know, associated whatever, with Islam. You know what and, I mean? and speaking as a Latina, where Islam is pretty new to Latino America mm -hmm. and the Caribbean, um, it's not associated. It's just not associated with Islam. And so when, when you become Muslim and you're from these places, it's assumed and expected and almost demanded that you drop your culture, your identity, and then absorb someone else's mm -hmm. or another group's um, which is this that's not that's not the way right. islam works and so again again 
when 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 you're gonna be faced with all that you don't even know all that is coming and yet you're gonna be like you know what you gave me some food i'm not angry let's do this mm -hmm. you know so needless to say take it with a grain of salt take it with a grain of salt <laughs> use your best judgment um, if it makes you feel good and it, and it makes you want to go out and do better for the community, how's the thing, right? If you see these things, then what are you doing for the, and then it's like, well, I'm actually a lot. And then you skip yeah, forward, but it. don't, you don't want to actively <laughs> get involved with the convert community and actually do something for them. For What's the point? What's the point? What's the point? So if you're going to, exactly. if you're going to appreciate and enjoy these videos, maybe think about going a step beyond that and actually getting active in the community and, and while well, doing something for converts, because a lot of converts are very lonely. A lot of them don't have a good support system. So maybe don't just watch the video and be like, well, mashallah, and then move on to the next one that makes you feel the fuzzies, right? <laughs> um, just actually gain something from it and be like, I should do something. I should, I should see what, what a convert community might need in my, in, in my community. What does my community need for me? That's just, you know, my... Two cents. Yeah, that might not be, be worth anything. That <laughs> really grinds your leader's gears, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so... All right, guys, um, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, if you like what you hear, of course, please like and share and sub either to the podcast or the YouTube channel or both. Or both. Do both. Do both. Do both. Go, Go do sub both. on everything. Right. Okay? Everything. Go follow, follow us. us on all the socials on the face. Book and on the uh, I can't, why I can't never get the damn name of Facebook right. I don't know on the Facebook on Facebook. God, I sound like such an old man. You do on Twitter. <laughs> shut up on Twitter on Instagram He's old. on TikTok. If <laughs> if you if you have enough working vision and you can right. use TikTok, go sub. Alhamdulillah, we're gonna be sharing more stuff on there. Um, and it's all at Islam by Touch. You can always send us a question. Uh, go to islambytouch.com, fill out the contact form. We will do it. Listen, guys, if we get enough questions and stuff, we'll do a QA and a episode. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, we're still not getting a whole bunch of episodes, so please, please, guys, share this. We're not getting a whole this. bunch of episodes. We're not, shut up. We're not getting a <laughs> bunch of views, guys. You know, the views are, are far and few between, so please share this with everyone you know. You know, let's, let's really get this somewhere where you have two people who are real, right, who aren't just, you know, put on that mask every time the camera's on. No, nope. This is us. This is us. We are 100% real. This is how I am behind the camera. This is how I am in front of people. This is how I am, you know, as compared to Cancer, who calls himself a chef. Here we go. Yeah. Huh? Yo, listen, forget this guy. You're mad. All right. All right. All right I'm but mad. Listen, that's, all right. That's, but that's, I'm not I'm not saying anybody's name. You should be proud of me. I am. That's, all right. That's redirected. Okay. My anyway. God, how many eraser pens does Noah have here? I don't know, man. A lot. <laughs> um, so, uh, so anyway, guys, please make sure you follow us on everything. Share, like, subscribe. Uh, Dita, you still doing yours? Yeah, it's still up. That always, <laughs> you, don't yeah, sound, you, know, you don't sound too enthusiastic about it. It's it's like not growing, and it's, I'm it's I'm tired, you guys. I it's not that I'm I'm not trying to be disconnected. Me and from Dita the are audience. trying to understand what what's the next step, right? Yeah. Should we should we all should we go all in on this land by touch socials? Should we um, like you know just put some personal stuff on there? Should we do something different? I had the idea of doing something like the couples cave. Yeah. Right? Where you get more of us. I mean, we're, we're, more we're, of it's us. not that we're saying we're going to drop a slam by touch, but it would. No, it's not. But this is like guys, more of a normal everyday thing. Like we'll show you so us you can, at the Renaissance Fair right. or something. <laughs> like, would you guys want to see more of that and of us together? Which I think I think it's fun. Anytime I do anything together with Nadid, like like this or conventions or anything like that. It's always really fun. No, I mean, not. we share all this stuff on yeah. on on the Slam by Touch stuff but, anyway. But, but doing things like that, like sharing a little bit of the Renaissance Fair or, and things like that, I think that would be that you know yeah, people like we'll it. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Maybe you got to like put on it. your tend, GoPro tomorrow. Yeah, I tend to not show a lot of my kids though, mm -hmm. and that's that's the that's issue, right? Because yeah. we do a lot of things with the kids. And so, but that's not, I'm not planning to share a lot of the Yo, kids. Yo, the ain't is real, bro. Yeah, the ain't is. is real. It's real. Man, and protect us from it. I mean, I mean, and. It's real, and also Islam by Touch and the the public stuff that we do is mm -hmm. Nadir and I. It's yep. not the kids, and I can tell you, especially with a teenager, you know, he's more like like I said, oh, I gotta go do a workshop, and he's like, I do I have to go? I'm kind of I don't <laughs> I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to yeah. be part. And and the thing is, I'm not gonna force them into it. And this isn't the you know what I mean. This is what we do for work. This isn't what they chose. This mm -hmm. is just how we provide for them. And so unless they really want to be part of the public aspect of things, it, I'd rather keep them off of it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. That's just my 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 two cents. Yeah. My view on, on how I work with 
balancing that with the kids and stuff like that. Trust me, I could show a lot of things on the homeschooling and all that stuff, but I just have to, if, if people are interested, I'll definitely show it. I just have to navigate it appropriately so that I'm not really showing my kids much because I don't have intentions to show a lot of the kids. That's just, and I know I've been asked a lot, like, oh my God, we wish we could see your kids and things like that. I've been, I have been directly told that, but I'm not really comfortable with constantly putting them up there. You might get a glimpse here and there. Yes, it happens. We, there were a lot, they were on a lot more before with other projects we were doing and uh things got crazy things got crazy and so and after one that of them got really sick you guys heard the stories go back and listen to your right. journey or whatever <laughs> and, you'll, and so, you'll hear it yeah you'll hear that and once that happened i had we to reevaluate. Like, no. we had to both sit down and reevaluate what yeah. we wanted to do and what we're doing is fine for us mm -hmm. but not the kids and so again you might you'll get here and there like okay um a couple months back a couple weeks back i put up a video it was me going on a walk with hazel and they caught glimpses of, they saw the kids, but it wasn't because I was purposely putting them there or, you know what I mean? They just caught random glimpses, especially the little one, because I had to keep pushing her on her, um, mm -hmm. on her scooter, on her little no, on her trike. trike, yeah, on her yeah. little tricycle. But in general, um, you're not going to get a lot of the kids, but I would absolutely love to share more of the homeschooling stuff we do, more of our own hobbies, more of what we're doing with you guys so that we can connect. And honestly, that's kind of the point of this podcast, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To humanize so you guys can see, listen, we're not a stereotype in any direction. Yeah, we're going to be talking about random things, you know, whether it be topical things that are happening in the world. Like just current. Or, um, or if it's just like a cool, like a crazy news article that we... Uh, that Yadita lands on, like that one, mm -hmm. in regards to this, something like that. This is this is this is going behind the blind, right? Yeah. This is going because there's more behind to us. What you see us, right. What you see us as whenever we're doing Islam by touch stuff. And there's and there's more to us than just the blindness. So. Yeah. Yep. And this is this is going behind the blind, yeah. going past this blindness, and really going into our opinions and the way we how we feel about things and what we like, what we don't like, and things like that. Yeah. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here with us today, and. We will see you next time where we take you behind the blind. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.